Now, let's talk about childhood obesity. One in five children in the UK is obese. And the biological and the social factors behind why this happens are pretty complex. But the long term consequences are known and they range from a higher risk of cardiovascular and liver disease through to diabetes. And now, according to a new study, it might also affect the development of a child's brain. Cambridge University neuroscientist Lisa Ronan has just published the findings and she's with us. So, Lisa, before we talk about exactly what you found, who were the children you were studying? These children, there was 2,500 children involved in this study, were acquired from different sites across America. The data was acquired as part of a £100 million study to look at the development of the brain and cognition throughout adolescence. And how old were they? From what age to what age? So this is the interesting part about this data set. These children that we looked at were between 9 and 11 years of age, but the scope of this study is to follow these children as they progress through adolescence. So we will periodically take measures from them over the next 10 years. So they were, they were just participating for no reason other than their healthy kids who are part of a research study. That's so exactly they're a right. reasonable cross-section of the population. Yes, they're a, gener- um, a representative sample of the population. And so you do these scans, including a brain scan. Mm-hmm. What did you find? Well, we were interested in looking at the association between childhood obesity and cognition and trying to understand whether that relationship was somehow related to underlying differences in brain structure that are also observed with childhood obesity. So is there a relationship between cognition and how large an individual is? Yes, uh, various studies before this one have demonstrated that association um, both in adults and children. And what, um, is, what is the nature of that association? It's a negative association. So the higher somebody's BMI, that, that's a measure of their adiposity, the lower the measure of various executive functions is what we call it. And what we mean by that is um, measures of things like ha- the ability to plan, to reason, to problem solve. It's related to impulsivity and ability to regulate your emotions and behaviours. This is what we mean by these cognitive measures that are decreased with higher BMI. So you knew that those functional things were there Mm -hmm. and you knew that there was this relationship and you wanted to ask, so what is it about the brain? Is there a difference that would account for those Yes, exactly. Do underlying brain structural changes explain that relationship? And what did you see? Well, when we measured um, the brains, so we use MRI, Uh, brain scans um, to model the brain and we modelled particular parts of the brain which is the cerebral cortex it's the essentially it's the grey matter of the brain it's where all the computation happens we were interested in the thickness of the cerebral cortex because that is related to executive function and what we found was that as BMI increased there was a thinning of the cortex so the cortex was thinner in particular regions related to executive function now is this cause or effect in other words, is, is my body big because my brain has a thin cortex or is my cortex thin because I have gained weight and if I carry on gaining more weight, I'm also going to see this magical thing we call a dose-dependent relationship, which is, which is where yeah. if something causes something, the more of it there is, the more the outcome you should see. So yeah. which is it? I think it's a really good question. I think there's a real instinct um, to assume BMI causes these changes, but it's just not, that's just not simply established at all. So there what is, is your interpretation then? Well, I'm afraid the interpretation is we simply don't know. There's several things we don't understand. The first is we don't understand the impact of these associations. They were very, very subtle. And we saw them because we looked at such a massive data set. The second thing we don't understand is the causal relationship between these parameters. It may be that BMI causes these changes, but it may also be that brain structural changes or differences in cognition cause BMI or increased in uh, obesity. So we simply don't know at this stage. And is the inference then that if you are prone to gaining weight, you gain some weight, this tends to lead to this part of your brain not becoming bigger and as a result you may therefore have a paucity of self-control which means you might be more prone to overeat more? Is it a vicious cycle? Well, again, that gets to the causal nature of things that we simply don't understand. That is definitely one of the narratives out there. But I think another compelling interpretation might be that these correlations we see could be the action of shared genes, for example. So we know that some of the genes that are related to obesity risk also independently are related to brain structure and also to cognition. So we could be seeing these correlations because all of these things share the same genes or they could have a causal relationship that at the moment we still don't understand. It's going to be very interesting to find out, isn't it? Lisa, yes. thank you very much for joining us to talk about it. Lisa's paper is out in Cortex, if you'd like to give it a read. Thanks very much, Lisa.